how will the presidential election impact real estate? Now we get this, this question is being asked a lot lately as we get closer to November. I'm getting it about three to four times a week. See, that's a lot. That's a lot. And there's different people. There's people that are bullish. There's people that are bearish. There's people that, um, you know, favor one political party and think that you, maybe the end of the world might come based on whoever gets elected, no matter, you know, but there's different levels of comfort, I guess, in this, and when we talk about this type of category. So the only thing that we can do is we can talk about what's happened in previous elections, what's happening right now in the real estate marketplace and give you our opinions at, expert opinions, if you will, on what's going to be happening uh, or how it, uh, the presidential election might impact real estate. Terrific, Lane. Exactly. What we want to do is use statistics and facts based on past history in presidential election years and share that with you and see how that fits into your story of what your plans might be for this coming fall. Yeah. So actually, uh, year over year, as far as number of homes sailed in general, not even talking about presidential election, we're actually going to be outpacing. Uh, experts are saying that we're actually going to be outpacing uh 2020 versus 2019. So there's going to be more homes sold in 2020 versus 2019. And that's crazy because we did see a, a significant drop off uh, in the springtime, especially when uh, COVID and the stay at home orders were in place. But all of a sudden, all of that activity got deferred into the summertime. We felt the summer heat kick up. And so now, we, like, it, is it going to drop off come this fall? So the question is, Scott, is there a drop off in home sales during a presidential election year, whether it's this one or past ones? Typically speaking, we know there is a small, slight drop off, and I believe that is in the 5% range, but I'm going to defer to Lane on that because he's our Mr. Statistics guy and is always is uber prepared to give you the best information today. So I do know there's a drop, Lane, fill us in on exactly what that tends to be in the past. Yeah, okay. So let's start with non-presidential years, right? So on non-presidential years, um, there is normally come Thanksgiving time, come November, there's normally about a 10% drop in overall sales in general. So what happens during presidential years? So normally in past presidential election years, uh, we've seen that 10% drop increase to 15%. So we will see a little bit of a drop and that's just basically people maybe a little bit uncertain about what's gonna happen. So that 10% that decrease in November compared to October in non-presidential election years goes to 15%. So yes, we probably will see an overall, the overall activity level slow down a little bit, but we're still feeling the effects of people that didn't want to sell maybe in the springtime or in the, maybe there's people that still didn't want to sell in the summertime because of the COVID situation that it might defer a lot of those sales. So that 15% decrease that we normally see in past presidential elections might be a little bit smaller this year, this year in 2020. Absolutely. So as we pause there, Elaine, thanks so much for that great information. It's pretty, pretty simple. I see kind of three things here that, that are in play. Number one, the normal seasonal drop off. And those are the folks that we get in midsummer, late summer that start saying, you know what, I think I'm just going to wait till after the holidays. I've been hearing that, you know, that statement for 30 years. And there's that's attributing that 10%. The next 5% what I'm hearing from you is due to folks maybe sitting on the sidelines a little bit with a little bit of an uncertainty with regards to the election. And then our wild card number three this year is uh, the COVID situation. And we what we do know is the pent up demand and some of the slacking off we saw in March and April has returned and exploded. So that could mitigate things. Yeah. And chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably watching this in California. However, we do have a lot of past clients and friends and family that are out of state now. And the stats that we're giving you are national stats. And so a lot of the um, areas that are more seasonal where they have harsher winters, they're actually nor like affected a little bit more come October, November, December, because it's a lot harder to show homes during that time too. So that drop off might be slightly higher in those areas than, they w than there would be in like a nice coastal Orange County, California region. So, uh, so that 10 or 15% that we're seeing nationally is always tends to be a little bit lower um, here in our area as well. One other thought I also have, Lane, is that given our pretty much always lower level of inventory than the rest of the nation here in Orange County for the entire time that we've been in business here at the Second Stone team, but especially this year and last year with the inventories being so tight, I sense that a lot of the buyers that have been looking and looking and missing out on homes are not going to step onto the sidelines. As long as the interest rates are still in play, as long as their jobs are there, as long as the underlying factors that create home affordability are there, I think that demand is going to stay. And those folks are going to say, well, if there's a little bit of a drop off uh, with people going onto the sidelines, I'm going to jump in 
stay in or stay in the game because I'm going to have better odds because these are people that are missing out on multiple offers still with three, 10, 15 offers on houses, you know, upwards of a million dollars. So the demand is there and they're going to yeah. think, you know what, I'm going to have a bit better chance. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, yeah. So if you're still, if you're still seeing multiple offers on a lot of listings here, um, there's multiple people that are missing out on their homes. That means that they're probably not going to be slowing down in the fall yeah. or the winter either. They're still going to be there. So if we don't normally see multiple offers come fall or winter, but we're seeing a heavy load of extreme multiple offer situations right now, there's still going to be a, maybe an increase of buyers and it come uh, the end of the year, uh, especially as we get closer to November election. So, but in recapping Scott really quick, past election years, nor the normal 10% a drop goes to 15% as far as home sold. The next question is, are those sales, that extra 5% drop, are they lost forever? Are they lost forever? I would say absolutely not. Because I think, again, what we've learned is people, they move for pain or pleasure. Uh, most of our clients, luckily, are pleasure. They're they're getting on to the next chapter of their, of their life. They're they're moving on to retirement homes and selling a big house. They're families that are moving up because they're wanting to get the kids in good schools and so forth. So, and then unfortunately the pain is, you know, uh, uh, someone passes away, a, a house has to be sold. Um, we're fortunate here in Orange County, not too many people for economic reasons are having to sell. But I think the bottom line is, I see what we've seen is people want to get on with the story of their life. They want to turn the page to the next chapter. And, uh, a little bit of a uncertainty or a hiccup in the overall uh, scheme of things in our own experience hasn't changed people's desire to continue to move on. They look to us as the knowledge broker, of course, to give them the, the facts and what we know about the local marketplace they're buying in, but they, they just want to continue moving on. Lane, your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And and when you said absolutely not, you're right in lines with chief economist Ali Wolf, who said that these purchases are just delayed until after the election. So very similar to how the spring, normal spring selling season was deferred to the summer. Uh, during election years, a lot of the times that that 5% drop off you see are deferred till right after the election. And she says, I'll quote, um, the year after a presidential election is the best of the four year cycle. This suggests that demand for new housing is not lost because of an election uncertainty. Rather, it gets pushed out to the following year. So expect, again, if this is the case and, and history repeats itself, expect a really, really hot spring market 2021. And, you know, one other comment I'll, I'll mention, you know, we just came out of our annual coaching summit, a big shout out to the Tom Ferry organization um, and the almost 8,000 people that attended the uh, three day virtual summit this past week. This echoes exactly what the experts that he had on board uh, telling us is going to be happening. Uh, we're geared up for an amazing spring next 2021. Yeah. And so if you're if you're buying now and you're having a little bit of a difficult time, maybe stick with it and you hopefully things ease up for you this fall, because if you're coming around next spring, there might be a good chance if everything remains how it is now, as far as inventory and low interest rates, it'll be a very competitive spring. Absolutely. Once again, we don't have a crystal ball, but we do like what we love to do is go to the experts, the higher sources, get the facts, look at what's happened in the past and use those as a guideline to forecast what we feel is probably a good chance of how the near future is going to look. Yeah. Yeah. So the last question on this topic is, uh, will it matter who's elected? You know, we had, th this could be the most contentious presidential election we've ever seen. Um, this kid, this, it, it, there's a, you know, we're a country that's divided right now and there's a lot of emotions out there. Uh, so if no matter what party, you know, you're, you're voting for this, this election, you know, it doesn't matter in the real estate market, who's elected at the end of the day? Well, this is where we turn to the experts again. Uh, there's a BTIG report that suggests a change in administration might benefit trailing blue county housing dynamics and the re-election of presidential Trump could continue to propel, propel red county out of performance. So to some degree, it could affect who's elected depending and also could affect depending on where you live. Um, however, the bottom line is if mortgage rates remain near all time lows, if the economy continues to recover, if unemployment continues to decrease as it is, if the forbearance mortgages are continuing to decrease as they are, real estate markets should remain strong up to and past the election, no matter who's elected. Thanks, Lane, for gathering those statistics. Again, these are the powers that are higher up than we are. 
we're down kind of on the basic lines just with all of our clients. And, and we know that there's everyone has their opinion. Everyone is listening to the talking heads on all the news channels, with, no matter what side of the aisle they're on. And, and everyone has an opinion and a thought. So we try to keep it to the statistics and to the facts. Yeah. Well, here's what we know. Let's just recap the facts, right? Here's what we know. We're in a, right now. We're in a real, a real estate marketplace that has extremely low inventory. The buyer demand is really high. Interest rates are low, and the Fed's already talked about keeping those interest rates low for a very long time. Uh, we're talking about a, a slight decrease normally, no matter if it's a presidential election year or not, come fall as far as 10%, and then a little bit of an increase during pre presidential elections of 15%. But then historically, after the presidential elections, it's been the best year uh, and the best months for real estate marketplace after. It, it's because everything gets deferred till until after the election, no matter who's elected. And one thing too that I did on my own is I looked at the past two elections. We had two different presidential parties get elected on the past two elections, right? And I looked what happened uh, the six months after that. And every every month, year, there was year over year growth and a year over year increase in sales and a year over year increase in uh, price for both of the last two elections. So if currently, if the real estate marketplace has low demand, low interest rates, um, low inventory, it's probably going to be the same after the election, no matter who's elected. And another fact and stat that we have is I went back and looked at our statistics and Sack and Stone team over the course of the last elections. And if we look at us as a little microcosm, how many families do we help buy and sell in a, in a given year? Our numbers have not fluctuated more than about two or three houses. We're somewhere, have been somewhere in the range of 60 to 80 uh, families helped every year. That really hasn't changed no matter what the presidential election has done. So again, in our little piece of the world, you know, among our 1,500 past clients and, and sphere, these people are continuing on with their plans and doing it. Yeah. Absolutely. How will the presidential election impact real estate? Now we get this, this question is being asked a lot lately as we get closer to November. I'm getting it about three to four times a week. See, that's a lot. That's a lot. And there's different people. There's people that are bullish. There's people that are bearish. There's people that, um, you know, favor one political party and think that maybe the end of the world might come based on whoever gets elected, no matter, you know, but there's different levels of comfort. I guess, in this t and when we talk about this type of category. So the only thing that we can do is we can talk about what's happened in previous elections, what's happening right now in the real estate marketplace, and give you our opinions, uh, expert opinions, if you will, on what's going to be happening uh, or how it, uh, the presidential election might impact real estate. Terrific, Lane. Exactly. What we want to do is use statistics and facts based on past history in presidential election years and share that with you and see how that fits into your story of what your plans might be for this coming fall. Yeah. 